All right, so uh, I'm here with uh, John Green, writer of uh, Teen Boat, and you know, I I always come to Baltimore Comic Con hoping to find something new and original, mm -hmm. but here you are telling the same old tire story of a boat that turns into a boat. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, it's a tale as old as time, <laughs> as they say. No, in actuality, how did you uh, think of that idea? Uh, well, actually, I'm the, I'm the artist of Teen Boat. Uh, I co-created it with a writer named Dave Roman, and uh, it was one of those ideas that, I don't know, if you've ever, uh, like in our, our uh, situation we were on a bus for a very long time okay and uh, naturally conversations we start talking about like cartoons or like just ideas and uh, there was this old cartoon uh, Turbo Teen yep. I don't know if you've heard about it but a kid that turns into a car and we were discussing this and uh, I remember it as being this terrible show and Dave had never heard of it <laughs> and he thought he was like that must have been amazing a kid that turns into a car that sounds great, and and I thought, well, I guess it, it could have been it could have been sillier. It could have been like a teen that turns into a boat. And he said, no, that sounds great too. <laughs> and he was like, I'll prove that's a good idea. I'm going to write a comic about it. And so he did, and then I drew it, and we we started as mini comics, like just stapled little mini comics, black and white. And then eventually, a publisher, uh, Clarion Books, uh, an editor there, saw it, and was like, this is hysterical. <laughs> let's let's have you guys color it, and then we're going to publish it. And we've done two volumes of it so far. Um, so, uh, what is it that turns him into a boat? Uh, well, he, he sort of has just a natural ability to do it at will, but there are situations when he can't control it. Uh, like, if he's, if he's too cold, he can't necessarily transform. Uh, if he's under a certain amount of pressure, uh, he can't really do it. It's kind of like Spider-Man, where sometimes, like in the second Spider-Man movie, he wasn't able to do the Spider-Man powers right. because he had too much, too much on his shoulders. Yeah. Um, other times, if uh, if he gets wet in the right spot, he'll transform like accidentally, which you know, you don't want to prematurely transform sure. in front of people. Sure. Yeah, it, so it sounds like a lot of those situations make uh, pretty good metaphors for the fact that he's yeah. a teen. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's about growing up. It's about going through, you know, changes, obviously, transformations. And uh, with uh, boat power comes boat responsibility. <laughs> and what uh, age group is it uh, aimed towards? Uh, primarily, uh, like, middle graders. Okay. So, like, uh, you know, there's the, 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 you know, what are they called? Uh, tween. Yeah. You know, 11 and up generally right. uh, but there's a lot of humor uh, that works on different levels so there's some slapstick stuff there's a lot of puns and then every now and then there's something kind of sly that like older kids might find funny and okay. retrospect sure and um, the, you have another book here that that I, I was looking through um, Hipp Hippopotamister yes Hippopotamister and is this, a, is this one um, solely you, or is this one that you also collaborated on? Uh, well, this I, I wrote and uh, illustrated this one, but I did have a colorist okay. on this one. Uh, she does wonderful work, and I saw her work at a comic convention years ago, and uh, she had this coloring style that was exactly what I wanted, and I hired her for freelance to do the coloring for me. Uh, so, um, what's the premise of this one? Uh, so, this is about a hippo and a red panda... Uh, red pandas are a real animal. A lot of people see them and they think I made them up, like this, this thing that looks like a raccoon slash fox thing. But yeah. no, they're a real animal. So they live in a rundown zoo, and they decide to uh, escape the zoo and try out different jobs amongst the humans uh, to varying degrees of success, uh, like fishermen or firefighters or yeah. hairdressers or chefs. Uh, and eventually it's a journey about uh, friendship and self-discovery and learning what you're good at. And, and discovering what you like to do as like a job or whatnot. Uh, so that's that's the premise. Uh, yeah, when I was looking through it, actually, what what drew my attention to your booth was one of the the scenes where they try to be fishermen. Yes. And um, what I what I like about it is um, it's a nice, very well drawn and very like a kind of a great first comic book for 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 kids. Yeah, yeah, I, I did it specifically with uh, like. You know, second grade, third grade readers in mind. It works really well for reluctant readers. So I think that's the beauty of comics is that if there's a kid that's struggling to read, comics are a great gateway into you know reading larger books because there's a lot of the visual cues that help you. Uh, so I did this, and it, and it works well as like a read aloud book for kindergartners that are just starting to read. Uh, so it works on a lot of levels. Yeah, I think I think one of the 
uh, ironies of, of the 1950s uh, crusade against comics is that it really is a great way not to lead you to delinquency, but to give you something excited to read about. Yeah. Because a lot of kids don't want to read because they find it boring, and this gives them something really exciting to read. Yeah, there's, it is kind of weird uh, how much pushback against comics there were uh, a long time ago, and, and some, in some places still to this day. Uh, because reading, if you're, if a kid wants to read something, even yeah. if it is just a comic book, like why stop them from doing that? Exactly. It seems a little silly, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and on the on the going back to the red panda thing, you know, the first time I ever saw one, um, I had gone to the zoo and they said we have red pandas. I was like, holy moly, there's red pandas! I just thought there were black and white ones, and I went and then, then just this little tiny. fox thing. And I was like, wait a minute. So I think their other name, Firefox. Makes a lot more sense. <laughs> That's true. Though the red panda uh, uh, actually was discovered before the giant panda. Uh. And the red panda is technically known as the one true panda. Oh. So uh, it's, it's just kind of funny that they've, they've <laughs> kind of have second citizen status yeah. in a way when people think of pandas. Do you have any references to them being the one true panda within the book? Uh, no, I didn't make any, I didn't make any overt <laughs> like panda jokes. Uh, but if I get to do a sequel, yeah. then maybe I'll, I'll find a way to work one in. Perfect. And uh, just to finish up, so you said you've gone to the second volume of um, Teen Boat. Yes, that's um, this one. Yeah, do you guys have more uh, planned? Uh, there, there isn't a current plan to publish more, but we do have more stories in mind that we'd like to tell. And mostly it's just, you know, finding the right time since it is a collaborative project. You know, both uh, Dave the writer, Dave Roman the writer, and I, you know, we work on other books at the same time. So, you know, whenever the planets align and we can do more stories, we'd love to get them out there. Okay. And given that it's uh, through Clarion, uh, you can get it anywhere, Amazon, Yeah, all you stuff? can get them on Amazon, uh, you know, Barnes & Noble, or like, you know, your local book retailer. They should be able to order it for you. Are they on Comixology? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. I think there are digital versions available, but I think... Possibly just through libraries. Okay. I don't know okay. exactly. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's fine. Thanks for talking to me. It's been Thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you.